How wet should concrete be? If you're new to mixing concrete, this is the first place that you're going to make a mistake for sure. Almost universally, uh, people new with working with concrete, they're going to add too much water, like a lot too much water. Basically how it works is you're mixing up the concrete and it's super, super dry and so you add a little more water and you mix it super dry. It's so hard to mix, you add a little more and it's still super hard. You add a, you know, maybe a little bit more water still and then all of a sudden it's soup. That's how it works, is there's kind of like a magic number that you're aiming for, and as soon as you add just a little bit too much, it's actually a lot too much. And the significance of this is that a little bit too much water significantly compromises the final strength of the concrete. The ideal amount of moisture for the concrete to actuate to maximum strength is actually like so dry, it's like damp sand. It's not wet at all, so it's way more dry than what the average person thinks it's supposed to be. They kind of see like, you know, maybe a, a thing on TV about pouring some concrete and it looks like slop, but that's like heavily modified with things like water reducer. Water reducer is something that you would use a lot of if you were making an engineered concrete mix, which is what you're getting when a gigantic concrete truck shows up at your house and starts dumping out concrete that looks like soup. It's heavily modified. You can't or you, you really don't need to make that at home. But what you should remember or take away from this is that it's, it's not the same. When you're not using all the specialty additives to make your concrete, you really want to go on the dry side. Like it needs to be wet such that you're able to use it for whatever application you're aiming for. But other than that, you want the concrete to be as dry as possible when you're mixing it. Now, why don't I mix up some concrete now, and I'll just show you what I consider to be pretty good for, you know, again, it's, it's totally application specific, how wet or how dry, what are you making? But I'm gonna show you some concrete that's gonna be really strong and pretty workable. The amount that you use of Portland cement and the amount of sand and the amount of gravel, again, this is application specific. For, for what I'm doing here, a general purpose mortar, I'm going to be using three parts sand, one part Portland cement. And it's okay if the ratio is a little bit off, but I mean, you want to try to get as close as possible to that. And that's whether you're using like spoonfuls, so three and one spoonfuls or shovelfuls, three shovelfuls, one shovelful, you know, buckets full, three buckets, one bucket. So again, it really kind of depends on what you're doing, how much you're going to be making, but that ratio is very important when you're making concrete. So that's the one shovel full. Tiny bit more water. And so I'm going for a, a three to one. There's one. And I'm going to put one, I'm going to call that one and a half. And I'm going to spin that up now. Then I'll add some more sand to bring the ratio up. So we need another one. And a half, pull out a half, and I'll spin that up and we'll see what it looks like.
actually think this is going to make a pretty good example here. You know, I wasn't really being that careful with my measurements, just throwing them in there. And what I've ended up here with is what I would consider to be basically the wettest mix I would consider to be acceptable. So as you can see, when I pick it up on the trowel there, move a little closer, it doesn't self-level. It doesn't just, you know, it's not, a, it's not a liquid. Even if I shake it a little bit, see I'm starting to lose some of that height. And if I turn the towel sideways, it's kind of sticky, but it should just come off cleanly. So again, that's what I would call a pretty decent mortar mix, but a little bit on the wet side. And so I would probably want to see you mixing it just a little bit, a little bit drier than that. But again, what's your application? What are you using this for? If you're using it for something that needs a lot of detail, like you're, you have a mold that you're going to cast, it kind of needs to be wetter because you need to be able to get the finer details and the finer textures in a very, very dry mix is not going to really do a good job with that. So again, I'm just going to take a little bit more of this out here. have about maybe half the bucket left and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry it up just a little bit because it's a little bit too wet and I want to show you what I think would be a better mix because look at this even as it's sitting here you see all that water that's pooling to the surface that's not good by the time you finish this get a nice even finish on it you're gonna have so much water raised to the surface that the top quarter inch layer of that concrete really is going to be pretty compromised in terms of, of finished strength and uh, any exposure to the elements, that's going to see a failure. So let me show you what, uh, what a better mix would look like. One scoop of that. The ratio I'm going for is three to one. Really anything from two to one to four to one is gonna give you something pretty usable. But I'm gonna to stick to that three to one there and see what that looks like. dryer. Let's take a look at this. So same thing. It doesn't level, doesn't self-level, but this time, even when I shake it, it's really not going to level at all, which I like better. That's the last one was too wet. That looks a little bit better. Again, it's got some like stickiness to it. That's the, that's a good sign. And when it comes off my trowel, I want it to come off clean like that. If it's not mixed well, or if it's too wet or too dry, it's gonna clump on and off. You want it to come off clean like that. So this is a good mortar. This is something that you could, I mean, you could build a lot of different things with that, and it's gonna give you a pretty reliable finish. It's gonna be strong. Again, as you can see with this one, there's just so much water raising to the surface there. Let me go ahead and add a little bit more here so you can compare the two of them. You can see just how much drier that is. The other one almost self-leveled. Yeah, so I think that's a good example there. If you're new to working with concrete or working with mortar and you're trying to find out, you know, like, what am I doing here? How wet is this stuff supposed to be? That's pretty good. And it can be a lot drier than that still. 
and it will be nothing but stronger. I mean, there's a point of diminishing returns here, of course. If it's just simply not enough water to actuate the concrete, then it's not going to work at all. But something like this is easily enough, and again, it could be drier than this, uh, with something like a dry pack concrete. Uh, which is basically just looks like damp sand. But if you're new to this, mix up something like this. It's going to give you a pretty reli reliable result in terms of uh, any applications that you're doing around the home. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.